I'm Corey Chisel, and this is Dave Willems. And uh, we came up with this concept of a music festival that would take over our downtown and um, would provide something that we've seen in other cities that we loved and really thought that we wanted to have all these bands and all these great places that we have in downtown Appleton. And Dave called me and kind of said, are you thinking what I'm thinking? And I said, well, can I take credit for it with you? And he said, yes, and uh, we're off and running. Yeah, and I think the idea was to look at our stretch of downtown, which is pretty unique with that whole mile, and to be able to, to develop it as a, as a thing called Mile of Music, and then to be able to have those 60 venues right within that stretch was, was just to kind of all fell together. On the top of our mind right now, looking forward to next year's Mile of Music, is to build a bigger, stronger, more effective uh, festival with twice as many bands. Not twice as many venues, but many more venues and how to uh, strategically do that in a way that we're offering as much quality music in quality places that we possibly can. And the logistics of that and the organizing are pretty much what we're up to our ears in right now. Yeah, and I think the, the challenge is, because we're only in our second year, we're still feeling it out, we're still learning, and, and we're looking at you know 60 venues, but we're also looking at 600 live performances. We had less than 200 last year, and that seemed like a lot. Um, so what does 600 look like and how is that going to play out over the four days? So it's one of those things that we're going to still be learning this year. There's no question about it. You know, when we first sat down and talked about it, we knew that the biggest challenge was going to be in that amount of time last year was going to be sponsorship and getting enough underwriting to be able to make this work for everyone because we also knew, if you recall, that this was going to be brand new to everybody. So the venues weren't going to be sure what this was about and we're going to be coming and telling them, hey, we're bringing all these bands in and we're going to have them play and you don't have to pay anything for that. What you have to do is just really put on a good face, do a great job of hospitality and they're going to look at us kind of like, really, you're going to do all this for the downtown? And, and so I think um, the investment we put into the first year has paid off in the sense that Everybody gets it now, they understand it, the, the folks downtown are really working hard to where is this going to go to the next level or how is it going to get to the next level. I think the lessons we learned have a lot to do with what I think Dave and I both discovered people really want and that um, the exciting element that even though there is a schedule and that there's things that people can see and plot out that there's still this, um, these pop-up shows that we did. This year we have a stage that's entirely a mystery stage that was really feedback that we've kind of gotten that people like this element mm -hmm. of excitement, they like the element surprise. of surprise, yeah. of unknown. And um, you know, that's something we didn't know going into it. I mean, we were, we felt like the whole thing was just a surprise. If we got through the weekend with our legs on our body, that was going to be enough of a surprise for us. But finding out that people want more of that, I think, was this gear, we're just trying to integrate as much uh, feedback as we, as we got from the festival to um, just see if we can make it happen, you know. They're starting to trust us that we're the Willy Wonkas behind this thing. We're trying to make a lot of chocolate bars. Is that the best way to say this? That's a great way to say <laughs> it. And I think the, the biggest, probably the biggest thing for unknown for this year, just like last year, is how many people are going to show up. Uh, we, you know, last year we had the anecdotal. As the week approached, we had a lot of people saying they were coming, and they came. And then this year, uh, there's a lot more people saying they're coming. And so we're kind of preparing for two or three times more people. If we have the same festival we had last year, we'll still be excited about it. But as we look at, at, at really next year and the year after, just like any business, you have to kind of plan for next month, and you have to plan for next year, and you have to plan for five years from now. So you're doing this, uh, even though we're only in our second year, you're kind of doing this a little bit um, tenuous because you're saying we haven't even had a second festival yet we haven't even seen what that looks like yet but you still have to plan for it and so we've been working you know the team back here in Appleton we have the team in Nashville and we have the team in Appleton and and uh, and, and now developing other teams elsewhere too but when you look at some of the agents that are out there that represent these artists and they're talking about the mile of music as a destination outside of the festival like can our guys come and play at the mile of music when we don't even have a festival going on, like in May or December or whatever, they're starting to get it really quickly, and they're really ahead of us in that regard. But that's where we're, that's where we're going, is that this becomes a destination for original, authentic music, uh, much more than just at the festival. Yeah, I mean, New Orleans has, you know, its corridor, the French Quarter. You know, we've got Beale Street, in Nashville, Memphis. Yeah. You know, Nashville's got Broadway and really the whole town. And ultimately, we're dreaming to the point where Appleton is thought of, isn't that that place where there's like an entire mile where there's nothing but arts and culture? And expanding that mile to really being like, isn't that just that town where these amazing things happen? And it's not Madison, it's not Milwaukee, but it's just this amazing place where art and culture is appreciated. And also a world where the arts are funded through things like our festival and things like that, and that we're not always looking to funding to come from other people, that, but that we can raise money ourselves 
you got to have a lofty dream or otherwise, you know, you can't hit anything. You know, we're, we're doing the announcement on Tuesday of 35 more, so we'll be at 135. Last year we had 107 artists for the whole festival, and we hadn't started announcing until the end of May, early June, I think it was, or something like that. We're so, far in. So we're, that's good. We're definitely in the forefront of where we were last year. Yeah. We're not we're mm -hmm. not batting from quite as far behind the dugout, and mm -hmm. it lets us have enough time for all those exciting new wow factor things to come when you're yep. when we kind of got our day job done which would be planning and booking this whole thing yep. we get to go in and being like you know what else would be cool and that's really when it starts to be fun it's like putting the finishing touches on a cake there's always going to be luck in these things but you hope that you can limit how much luck you have to have so that's a that's a big plus for this year